you need to watch this tier list video if you're coming back to Genshin or if you're a first time player. I expect a lot of people will be joining up or coming back for 4.0, so this will be a good check in on which characters to pull if you don't have them or which characters to pull to build up your account. So without further ado, let's hop into it. So first and foremost, we're going to be looking at pull value, obviously. So must pull, they're a great character for any team comp now or for the future. They fit into so many different comps. They work well with a bunch of different characters that getting them will work with most of the characters that you have or a bunch of characters that you have and then a lot of characters that will come out in the future. Decent will be anything, any characters that enable new team comps that work well with the characters that you already have. Situational style is characters that you should only wish for if you really like their design, their kit. Generally speaking, people wish on them for their for their for their style, for the character design and how they play, how they feel. Situational support. Recently, there's a lot of five star characters that have been released and that are kind of subpar that need a four star that release with them to bump them up to the next level. And sometimes it's two five stars. That's what will be in that tier. Mediocre. You can't really complain if you get them. Don't pull intentionally. Best left to collectors. 50-50 frustration for the standard banner. And then Aloy is Aloy. We are going to start with Albedo. I have Albedo in the support pull tier. He's a good geo support. I mean, you could run him. I, I guess you could run him as DPS if you wanted to. I've also seen him used as a shout support since he does buff plunging attack damage. To me, he's more of a situational support. So if you have other geo characters or if you have a shout that you want to to build a shout team, he'd be a, a situational pull in that case. Next up, I have to scroll down because it's at the bottom here. Uh, Alhatham. Alhatham is decent. He's really good. He's a Dendro Kaching. It, not exactly, but he's really good on field character for Dendro application, Dendro DPS. Good at an aggravate team. I haven't really tried him too much in in like Hyper Bloom or something like that. But he's a good driver, especially if you have his signature weapon, which boosts elemental damage. Uh, next up, Aloy is Aloy. Need I say more? Amber. She's on the standard banner, so and, but you get her for free. So anything you get will be constellations. But I mean, she's Amber. As far as I can tell, she's the quickest um, free character that gets replaced with Shang Ling. So she's standard banner. Ito. He's a decent DPS. He's been aimed more towards mono geo teams. He's not exclusive to those. And I think he's the only character that kind of fits into Yoon Jin's buffing potential, but actually can't get the full buff from her because he's geo and matches her element. So if she's running a team with two, three, four different elements, she gets higher and higher buffing potential accordingly. So putting her on a team with him immediately limits her buffing potential to the three character or like the, the three different element tier. And his burst basically infuses him with geo damage, but it counts as normal attacks. So like normal and charged attacks. So she's able to buff his normal attacks. But I like I explained, he she's not able to buff him as much as she can buff somebody, somebody else like Ayato or Yoimiya or Xiao, anybody who does infused normal attacks with their burst. So Ito sits in decent pull. It's just the uh, he can't be fully supported by Yoon Jin, but he has a couple different teams he can be on, mainly Mono Geo. Baiju. Baiju sits in situational support. We'll get to it in a little bit, but there is an Electro character that he works really well with, but you have to have him in the Electro character. So unless you pull one of them for their style, kind of like the best builds are kind of locked out until you have both of them, right? And it wasn't really clear since he didn't run with them. So we'll get to that in a little bit here. Barbara is a free character. Uh, she's a token healer, so she'll go into mediocre. Not the best, not the worst. There's a better Hydro healer. To me, there's just a better Barbara out there. Uh, and obviously there's worse. Next up here is Beto. I have Beto in mediocre as well. She has an interesting play style, but it encourages her being on field to kind of deflect the damage, which there's clips online of her at like 150 health being able to beat the Raiden Shogun boss solo. And there's just a lot of dodging and a lot of countering. So that's a specific play style. So if you're going to main Beto, you have to know what you're getting into with that. Bennett, 
I don't think there's any question here. You got to get him, whether it's from the store or from a wish. He's an absolutely incredible character, even if you do C6 him. Now, C6 does lock him out of being completely useful for all characters like Eula. If you put him on a Eula team and you use his burst, he will infuse her attacks with Pyro and she doesn't want to do Pyro. She wants to stay physical. So for the past couple of years, there's been a debate over C6 your Bennett. Don't C6 your Bennett. Do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. If Hoyverse ever adds in toggleable constellations, I think that'd be a really cool thing to do testing on as opposed to having to look between two accounts that might have different builds, different weapons, stuff like that. So getting it consistent would be difficult for testing. Next up, we have Candace. Now, Candace does have a burst that infuses was that sword, claymore and pole arms with Hydro. And she kind of has that Beto reflect rebound damage function. I haven't used her as much for that. I've used her more for the, the cryo infusion with my Hurricane Dory team. Candace is going to sit in mediocre with Beto. The play style is kind of mid. It is what it is. Just waiting for someone to attack you to get your fully charged skill. I'd rather just, you know, switch to people and just constantly spam skills and do damage like on my Hyper Bloom team. Shang Yun. So he's usually used for his cryo infusion. He could be a, I mean, I guess, I guess you could build him into a cryo DPS. That'd be pretty cool. His burst would be cool. <laughs> this, that's a lot of puns right there, right in a row. So his most common team that I've seen is the national and in the national, if you're replacing any character, you're replacing Shong Yun. So we're going to put him in mediocre. If you get him, you can use him. That's absolutely no problem. So looking at the next one here, we have Kali. <laughs> so if you played Genshin when Kali came out, you already have two copies of her. You get one from the Spiral Abyss and one from the event that we got back then. I think there was an was there something else that had another free Kali? I can't remember. So you could have C2 or C3 Kali for free if you played when she came out. I would never pull on a banner to get Kali. She's not the best Dendro application. She's not the best Dendro damage. You basically have to use her burst and enemies have to be drawn into there. So yeah, you could Animo CC and pull them in there or knock them in with like a Claymore or something like that. But it's just too situational. I mean, she's a fine unit to start with and start using using if you're clearing floors of the spiral abyss i mean you do have to clear a couple floors to get her and then she's a really good character for early hyper bloom teams but at the end of the day she's replaced immediately as soon as you get a tainari or any other dendro character like every single other dendro character replaces her and nearly does her job better apart from long range dendro application for like pillars or stuff like that and then just tainari like she released with tainari and literally anything that she does tainari does better specifically because his aoe dendro is on his skill hers is on her burst Next up, we have Sino. Now, Sino was the one I was talking about during my little bit about Baiju. If you have Baiju, Sino would be a fine pull. If you have Sino, Baiju would be kind of a fine pull. But when it comes to Sino, he falls into situational style because unless you like his play style where it's just him on field at all times, basically Omega Razor, and you have Baiju to do that aggravate damage, I'd hesitate to say there's a good best build for Sino that isn't having Baiju on the team. You could have other off-field support characters or off-field application characters like Yalan, Xingqiu, Shangling, but then you're basically beholden to burst times to do electro charge or overload. I don't see too many teams that are based around electro charge or overload making their rounds online. I do see aggravate teams. So Baiju and Sino, if you get them together, Sino's more style, Baiju support. I got Baiju because I liked his style, but Baiju is actually a decent replacement for Nahida, depending on what team you have from on, but that's just all, that, that, that's neither here nor there. All right, Dia, <laughs> standard banner lol. Yeah, I mean, they had a Dia banner, it's gone. Same the way they had a Tainari banner. I didn't wish on either one. Standard banner characters are mid. They're not supposed to be great. They're supposed to be a way to uh, keep you wishing on the gotcha. I mean, Dia is helpful in Dragon Spine because she, she can't die to it, but. <laughs> Diluc, standard banner, like I said, do kind of mid outclassed by Klee and then outclassed again by Hu Tao and Yoimiya. Diona. She's a decent shielder healer, decent cryo application. Uh, she's mediocre. If you want her, wish for her is what it is. If you get her, great. I mean, I wouldn't wish on a better specifically to get her unless you're trying to, <laughs> if you're, unless you're trying to collect. Okay, you gotta catch them all. Dory. Oh, Dory. Oh. So I put, did I put Dory in mid? No, I didn't. I put her in door intentionally pull. Of course I did. Dory is one of the few characters who does consistent application of her element with her burst. The other one being Bennett. That was the basis of my uh, Hurricane Dory build. Dory and Jean instead of like um, Sunfire, Bennett, 
Hurricane Dory. I mean, it, it wasn't that good because you're you're just swirling Electro off yourself. So then, okay, what do you do from that? Do you build a Hyper Bloom team off of that? Do you build an Overload team off of that? Like, what you're focusing on her build is swirling the electro off of yourself her burst also heals which it doesn't heal too well and also recharges your energy just like, like a tiny like piddle in a mound yeah it's 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 fine but it's i believe it's just your on-field character so it's not really that decent it doesn't provide much value there because i believe it generates a set amount of energy and it's not orbs that you can buff with energy recharge after Dory comes Eula. Y'all know where she sits. Style. She's that dancer. She got that slappy. Nobody wishes for her because she's the, the top of the meta. There is a reason that her banner with Klee didn't go so well. Also because it was right before 4.0. But the whole point is she can do massive physical damage. Emphasis on physical. Physical damage isn't what Poyoverse is building into. They released Mika. So you have one support, one physical support, that's it. And you've got two physical DPSs? You can argue that Xin Yan is a physical DPS? We'll get to where Xin Yan falls later on, but again, Yule is purely style-based. She can do a lot of damage, but she's not a must-pull. Farzan. Now, Farzan is situational support. She 100% supports Skarmouche and Xiao. Maybe Hazo if you build him as a DPS. She is purely animo support. She buffs animo damage and buffs animo crit rate, which is actually incredible. But we'll, we'll see a little bit later how her release has affected the five stars and their releases because she released alongside Wanderer. Next up is Fischl. Fischl's actually pretty good. She can be built as a physical or an electro DPS. She can also be an electro support. So we're going to put her in decent. Ganyu. So, not sure how many people know my gaming background here, but Ganyu matches it perfectly. My first Steam game was CSGO. <laughs> One of my favorite games that I dumped tons of hours into was Destiny 2. She is the point and click adventure damage queen, but she's not for everyone. Her playstyle is not for everyone. So she'll go into decent. Oh, I should say that uh, just because they're in a tier, you know, after or before somebody else, doesn't it doesn't matter. The tier is the tier. It's not ranked within the tier. Otherwise, there'd be a lot more entries here. <laughs> yes, so she is a uh, she is an FPS playstyle and huge damage potential if you have the right supports for her. However, her style is not necessarily the best, and she can be easily replaced by another cryo DPS. Goro is situational support. If you're running a mono geo team, that's where he shines. But if you're not running a mono geo team, where does he fit in? He can shoot rock from far place. He most effectively buffs when he's in a team with four geo characters. I don't know how common mono geo is, but I'm assuming it's not too common considering it's been how many patches since Yoon Jin was released and she was the last geo character. And then we'll see the next geo character sometime during Fontaine. There wasn't a geo character released during anywhere in 3.0 or, or, or in version three. Yeah, because Yoon Jin was last one, so. Next, we have Hu Tao. This one might be a little contentious. Her value is greatly increased by early constellations because that uh, removes the stamina cost from her charged attacks. And her optimal play is kind of like dash canceling with a vaporized team. So it requires other characters and it requires specific play style and practice. All teams require practice. So like, that's kind of a moot point there. But because it requires other characters to be optimal, we're gonna put her in decent. Any character in the decent tier, you can pull and not feel bad about it, but must pull, obviously. No matter what team they're on, they benefit it greatly. Jean is standard Lamau. Kaidahara Kazuha, my boy. So I pulled him recently and I absolutely love his playstyle, how he flows. But what I love more than that is how you just literally give him as much elemental mastery as possible and he'll just nuke everything. I showcased in one of my videos, if there's a hilly churl standing in water, I don't even need to switch to another character. He just does his little skill up and then down and the hilly churl is done. Absolutely a must pull. No matter what team you have him on, he will greatly benefit it, even if it's just running around but any type of elemental damage boom he's right there give him Veritas inventor a four piece shreds everything does some more damage himself piece of cake kaya is standard banner lol 
Ayaka. She can deal a lot of cryo damage, especially if you get some constellations, but she has a specific, like when she's on field, she has a specific rotation. You usually run her with the cryo support. So then you do the little dash, you apply cryo, and then when you pop up, then your, your sword is now infused with cryo, so you get that extra crit rate from the cryo application. She's now doing more cryo damage. She gets buffs from her passive, stuff like that. So then it might be a constellation that charge attacks then boost your burst damage. So it's a very particular place now to get all of your buffs up, and that's on top of all of your off field supports. So because she requires specific knowledge or you have to learn the specific rotation, both team rotation and her on field rotation, and she needs other characters, we're going to put her in decent. She doesn't immediately revolutionize your account as soon as you get her. Ayato, one of my personal favorite characters. I think he's decent. He's not a must pull. He doesn't change everything. He doesn't, you know, it's not it's not like one of those MTash videos. This changes everything. I got an Ayato. If you get a like double Ayato and one and a 10 pull, maybe. I believe if you load HP onto him, he's a decent support with his burst. Again, it's kind of like Ganyu. Some people think he's a boring playstyle because you, you use your skill and you just hold down left click and he just does all of his slashes and you switch off of him. I like supporting him with like Bennett, Yoon Jin, because he that counts as his normal attacks are just infused with Hydro and scale off of his skill talent. One of the funnest builds I put together with him was the Supersonic Ayato. So if you give him four piece Desert Pavilion set, if you do a charged attack before you use his skill, he then gets an extra 10% attack speed, so he could do a lot more slashes. And I actually released a video charting how his damage increased across all the buffs that I gave him from just a regular Ayato to that specific build. He doesn't benefit from the animo damage, but he does get the extra attack speed boost from the four piece set. So Ayato is just decent. Kave. <laughs> Kave's niche. He can pull in Dendro Cores and he can heal from the damage that they deal. I haven't used him too, too much, I'd say he's mediocre. You put him on a Bloom team, maybe with Nilu. That's what I've been wanting to try recently, but I haven't uh, leveled him all the way up to the point that would be a team that I've actually been able to build. He's really, really niche. As I put it, niche of the niche. You can build a Bloom team, but then you put Kave on it to like Kave groups the, the, the Bloom cores together and then like detonates them and heals off of it. So. I think it's really, really unique, and I think that's something that you can not feel bad about getting on your account. So it bumps him out of don't intentionally pull because he's it's not horrible, but it's just a little niche. Kaching, standard Lamau. Kaching's not too bad. Electro I'll hate them. Not 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 much more to say. G you can run physical, you can run electro, but it's beat DPS either way. She could be a burst support if you want to run her like that. I haven't. Next up is Kiara. Kiara is the newest character? Yes, she's the newest character. She's good for traveling around the world. She can run up walls, which is really cool. She's the only character who can create Dendro cores from herself when it rains. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Self-application of that Dendro. I would almost think to make like something with Jean, but then but you can't swirl Dendro. I think you should be able to swirl Dendro. Like, I've seen Dust Devils pick up leaves, but I digress. Kiara is mediocre. Next on the list here is Klee. So I'd say she's situational to the style that you want. If you like child characters, if you like how they run around and they're cute, you can pull for her. Not a bad choice. Better pyro DPS than Diluc situationally. And again, if you like how she just throws bombs, just just chucks bombs everywhere. I mean, personally, I like it. It's, it's really funny. Everybody else is using swords and magic and she's just chucking nukes. Her skill, like the little cluster bomb from her skill can actually be grouped up by Jean and launched, which is pretty funny too. So if you want to go for that kind of meme build, meme team, Klee is absolutely someone that you can pull for that. Again, she's outclassed by Yoimiya and Hu Tao. And I mean, you're basically using the same team comps. They're basically vaporized for all of them. Kujo Sara, she's situational support. She works best supporting Electro characters, and she has decent uptime and variability on the buffs that she gives. Even though it's just like a short six second buff, she gets one when you do her E, but then she also gets a charged attack that can create the same kind of sigil on the ground. You switch to the character you want buffed, it explodes onto that character, and they're buffed in the next six seconds. Then you can swap back to her, do another charged attack. So you, you do your E once, you get that first buff, then you do a charged attack, and then you switch back to the character that you want buffed again. So it allows for a little bit more flexible rotations because you know you don't feel bad about switching off of your buffed character, like you do for Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer, where you can only get it once every however many seconds, and then it lasts for a bit. So you're not wasting the buff by switching again, you're actually encouraged to do that. So I like the playstyle on Kujusara. 
She works best with an Electro TPS, usually a Kaching build or a Raiden Shogun. Kuki Shinobu used to be mid, but with Dendro, she's not anymore. She's decent. My Hyper Bloom team uses Kuki as the only Electro application, and that's all I need because she creates that off-field AoE from her skill, and you just go to town. I think it's Further Constellations expand the AoE or Ascensions, I can't remember which, but she's an incredible Hyper Bloom enabler. Like, whenever I put together a Hyper Bloom team, I don't put anybody else on it. If I have a Dendro Core on the ground, I know Kuki can immediately just explode it and I can switch off to another character, or I can run over with her skill up and do it. With Raiden, unless you're attacking something and hitting it, you don't trigger the coordinated attack. And it's been hard to trigger Hyper Bloom cores with an Electro Catalyst character. Like, the person who's up next, Lisa. She's on standard. You can't get many constellations of her. You got it for free. I mean, she's good hyper bloom at the very beginning of the game. You put together a little Kali, Dendro, MC, Lisa, Barbara. You got a token hyper bloom team. Mika. Thank God Mika's on here. I almost thought he wasn't. Situational support. You want to do a, a physical DPS build with Eula or maybe Shin Yan? You got Mika. Otherwise, he doesn't really provide too much. There, there's a couple buffs that he does provide, but like. You just go with somebody else. Mona, standard banner. I mean, her C1 still broken, or whichever constellation is supposed to freeze for longer, still broken. Your character's not even fully functional, so there's a limit to how high she could be on this, even if she wasn't standard banner. Nahida, oh boy. Nahida's a must pull, 100%. If you want Dendro at all, you have to get her. Her off-field application is absolutely crazy. You grab enemies with your E, take a little screenshot, take a little picture. You can connect a bunch of enemies together. Will you perform a reaction on any one of them, all of them get a hit of Dendro damage. And C2 Nahida allows all of your Dendro reactions to crit. So now you have Hyper Blooms that have a 20% chance to crit, do 100% extra damage. You can't buff that in any way. That's the only thing that could possibly be better in my opinion. But Nahida is absolutely a must pull. Nilu. So, Nilu creates her own niche. It's not that she fits into a niche, she literally creates it. Bountiful cores are created whenever she's on a team, and you perform Bloom, and it's just Dendro and Hydro characters. So, she's mediocre. I mean, she could go to situational style, but that locks you in. Yeah, I might just put her there. If you're okay with the style, the dancing, which is, the dancing's fine, it's, it's really cool. She can fit into other teams as well, but then you're ignoring part of her kit. I made a video covering it, I'll link that down below, check that out. Ning Wong. So she can be used as a Geo DPS or burst support, but like she's outclassed by five stars in both Geo DPS and support. So mediocre. Noelle. She's free. So there's a limit to how, you know, how, limit to how bad she can be, also limit to how good she can be. She's a decent healer and shielder. You can build her as a DPS. I'm gonna put her in mediocre. Chi Chi. Standard banner. You lose 50 50 to Chi Chi. You cry. That's how it goes. Raiden Shogun. The Electro Archon is a must pull. Anytime you want an Electro character, Raiden Shogun will fill that role. Nearly anytime, she's a battery. She's an off-field Electro Applicator. She's a DPS. You get her an energy recharge weapon that can buff her burst like the catch, completely free to play, R5 catch. You give her four piece emblem and a lot of energy recharge and she'll nuke everything. Whenever I pulled her, I was able to get the highest crit on my account because I had already had some decent emblem artifacts on my Xingqiu. Razor. He can be built as an Electro or Physical DPS, but if you're looking at those individually, Electro DPS, Physical DPS, he's outclassed. Eula, Raiden Shogun, Sino. So he's uh, he's mediocre. I think early on in my account before I got Beto, I had uh, I, I used the Razor as my as my main. For a little bit, I was a Razor main. Never thought about that. <laughs> Rosaria. So she buffs crit rate based on what you have on her. I think up to 15% she can give to somebody else. She's cryo sub DPS and her support. You could build her as a cryo DPS. Eh, she's mediocre. Kokomi, she's a great healer. One of the, uh, You can argue that she's the best healer in the game. And she has incredible Hydro application. She fits really well into a Nilu team. She fits well into a Hyper Bloom team with all the application and healing that she has. She's decent. I wouldn't say she's a must pull. So next up we have Sayu. Her playstyle is really fun. You get to you get to Beyblade around everywhere. It's it's amazing for exploration. I'm sure there's a Sayu main subreddit that never specifically looked for it, but I haven't come across it. So she's really good at exploration. She's she's a mainstay on any exploration team. She was right with Wanderer for the fast travel speeds and to get that animo resonance. Just really works well together. But she's she's mediocre. Shen Pretty sure she has a general damage buff. Buffs everybody to like 
maybe 15% damage or something like that. But then she really fits into a niche with cryo DPSs like Ayaka, Ganyu. She could buff Rosaria. She could buff Shong Yun if you really wanted to build that way. But it's usually Ganyu or Ayaka that you see her builds show up. She is 100%, 100% situational support. You can build her as her own DPS because you just shove as much attack onto her as possible. But at the end of the day, she works best buffing somebody else based on her attack stat. Hazo. Hazo is a, a decent animo DPS. You also, I could have him as an on-field driver, like a taser team or something like that. So it could work pretty well. But as an animo DPS, he is 100% outclassed by Shaolin Wanderer. Like, there's, there's, once you have somebody else to replace and there's not really a reason to use him, unless you're trying to run two animo DPSs in the Spiral Abyss. The, the meta very heavily dissuades that, but I'm sure you could do it. The next animo character is Sucrose. So, given that the only animo character that you're guaranteed to have, that all accounts have, is the Traveler, have you tried attacking enemies that are caught in the Traveler's Tornado? Unless you got using a bow character, like, what are you doing? They're up in the air. The Wind Ball is pretty fun too, but as soon as you pull Sucrose, your main character is immediately replaced. They switch off of Animal. They're, they're now a Geo, Electro, Dendro MC. So Sucrose is 100% a must pull. If you see her on a banner and you want the five star, you're gunning for Sucrose or Sucrose Constellations. Second to Kazuha, I would I, I would hazard to say she's arguably the, the, the second best Animo unit in the game. If you're looking at support, she works as well as a driver, but not so much on the DPS side. Tartaglia. Oh, geez, this one, he is a he's quite a unique character. He has a stance change and then you basically have to pay attention to when you made your stance change. So you're not ending up with him on field for far too long. I think he can have like a 45 second cooldown on his skill. But if you play in the right way, if you'll get to know him and you put him on a good team. He's really decent. He'll absolutely serve as an incredible DPS, but I don't uh, I don't think he revolutionizes your account to get him. He doesn't replace any other individual character. Moving down the list here to Toma. Toma's good burst support. He enables some cool builds like Firebender Hazo, which is pretty awesome. I guess you could do Firebender Baiju, maybe. He's mediocre. It's a fun play style. A little bit of shields here, a little bit of Iro support there. Tainari. Standard lol. Venti. 100% power crept by Kazuha. So, cannot be a must pull, right? They can't both be must pulls. It's one or the other. Kazuha is far better, in my opinion, than Venti. He can't even CC the samurai on Inazuma. So he's 100% a playstyle. If you want to have that wind ball summoned, if you want to have that explorational assistance, then pull him. Play him like that. I love Venti. Got one copy of him. I was really happy with him for the longest time. And then I got Kazuha and he was kicked off my teams. Now he's kind of sitting on the bench. Next up is Wanderer. Like I mentioned, he has his situational support in Faruzan. He's on field to Animo DPS, but his full potential is locked behind getting Faruzan. And any Wanderer banners that come up better have Faruzan on them. I believe we're expecting Faruzan on this next banner here because it's Kokomi and, and Wanderer. I don't know if it's if I don't know if that's confirmed. I don't think Hoyovich has said anything, but I think we're hoping that Farazan makes it onto the banner with him. So he's he's a decent pull no matter what, even if you don't get a Farazan copy. But he greatly benefits from it. And any character that doesn't need a four star or another five star, but greatly benefits from them, absolutely cannot be in the most pull tier. Next up is Shang Ling. You get a copy of her for free. Ironically, I got a copy of her off of the beginner banner before I got her from Fire Abyss. So I had her at C1 just out the gate, which was I was really happy with because I heard that Shang Ling was a great character and she absolutely is. But you get her for free. So if she's on a banner, that's not a huge draw to pull for it. Unless you want to get up to C4 or C6. But those, in my opinion, that's just icing on the cake. You already get a Shang Ling copy and she's good enough at C0 to be your main DPS or a burst support if you're free to play. Shao, my boy, Short Kings rise up, Pogo man himself. He takes a lot of on field time, let me tell you. He needs a healer to keep his health up. He was kind of a, I don't want to say he was power crept by Wanderer. They both kind of fill the same role. They both really benefit from Faruzan, but Shao wasn't built to require Faruzan. So I'll put him in decent. Down the line here we have Xingqiu. 
he is the best low investment hydro applier in the game 100 must pull if you see him on a banner and you like the five star that that's the biggest thing about these four stars you have to like the five star because if you accidentally get them wishing for the four star you're cooked right you don't want to be wasting your pity or even a guarantee on trying to get a four star character you can buy Xingqiu from the shop Xinyan, <laughs> Pyro, Shielder, and Cleanser, which is really good at cleansing, but she's a physical DPS. Kind of got to pick and choose what you want to do there, Xinyan, even though I made a video about her. Do not pull on a banner for any specific four star, but do not pull on a banner for Xinyan unless you just like your character, per se, you know? Xinyan ain't worth it, bro. It's like whenever you're like three drinks in at the bar and you're just like, I think I'm gonna go hit on the bartender and your friend's like, it ain't worth it, bro. No, you don't You don't hit on the bartender or the people playing the music in the corner. It ain't worth it. <laughs> this is a cantina in Star Wars. Yow Yow. Another relatively new character. Pretty cool kit, healing. Dendra application. She can either heal or do damage, depending on if your uh, on-field character is fully healed. In the past, she was free, so you could have picked up a copy for free. I'm gonna put her in mediocre. Not that, I, I'm not the best, not the worst. I wouldn't pull on a banner for her, but if you get her, don't be sad. Next up is Yolan. Yolan is Xingqiu, but upgraded. So she goes in the same tier as him. If there was a must, must pull, she would be there. There is a reason that Yolan and Hu Tao's banners that came out recently set the record for revenue coming in from one set of banners. They're crazy, especially together. Oh my goodness. Vaporize. Sheesh. Next up is Joy Mia. So she has multiple different types of builds that are 100% viable, even multiple artifact sets that you could put on her. She's decent. If, if you like her, pull for her, that's great. But she's not someone that you need to get when they come around to elevate your team. Next up is Yamiko. I've heard that she can be build, built as a DPS, but she's more common to see, or I've seen her more commonly used as an Electro support for Raiden Shogun or a sub DPS. So we're gonna put her on uh, support, situational support. Yanfei, if you like her play style, if you like like the, the, the legal stamps or whatever she does, absolutely grab her off a banner and, and, and use her. To me, it's situational based on her style. Yoon Jin. Everybody says that Bennett is the best attack buffer in the game. He's the best specifically attack buffer, but he also heals. So the combination of buffing attack and healing and not really having that split scaling really benefits him. But Yoon Jin really, really, really buffs normal attacks. In a burst, where you get that infusion for a bunch of different characters, the game counts as normal attacks. So we're going to put her in must pull. If you use a normal attack character or just any normal attacks. So let's go down through the list here. While she doesn't give him the most benefit, our Geo Boyo here, Ito, does normal attacks that are infused with Geo and have his burst scaling when he's inside his burst. I'm pretty sure Hu Tao is considered normal and charged attacks. Ayato is normal attacks. Xiao is normal attacks. Yoimiya is normal attacks. Let's see, who else is normal attacks in their burst? Probably Beidou. I would expect Beidou to be normal attacks. Noel. I expect Noel. Razor might be. Yunjin doesn't buff physical or elemental or geo attacks. She buffs normal attacks. We'll do Layla before Zhongli. Layla is, I believe, the second best shielder in the game. Her scaling is, is really good. I'm pretty sure. I haven't looked at the numbers in a couple in a couple weeks, but she's decent. If you get her, awesome. If you like the five star and you're pulling on the banner and you want to get her, go for her. Zhongli. I can't pretend here. Zhongli's absolutely must pull. You cannot beat Zhongli's shields. He kind of makes you complacent if you're not careful because you don't need to dodge. What is that damage coming in? No, it's a shield blocking it. That's what it is. You build him into HP percent and he's good. He, he has the tankiest shield possible. He doesn't take a four star weapon or a five star weapon. His best in slot, I'm pretty sure his best in slot HP percent pole arm is Black Tassel, which you get from running around the world. You can get an R5 easily. You can level that, that up easily. So this is the finished tier list. You got your standard banner and Aloy at the bottom. But in your must pull, it's a very, very slim Bennett, Kazuha, Kusanali, Raiden Shogun, Sucrose, Xingqiu, Yilan, Yunjin, and Zhongli. I hope you all enjoyed the tier list. I don't know if you could tell, but it was recorded on Twitch live. So if you want to be there for more recording of videos like this one, give me a follow on Twitch. And if you like this video, drop me a like and a sub and uh, comment where you'd put your characters.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.